necessary. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Disney Beams. I'm Cherry. I'm that guy. Normally I'm Gooch, but today I'm that guy. <laughs> I actually have a name tag that says I'm that guy. He, he really does. Yeah. Uh, and Josie is watching Disney Junior in the other room. We're trying to get her to go to sleep. Um, so it's like a planning video, and it's to try to help families that with toddlers uh, that have never either never been to Disney before or have never traveled with a child before. So we're calling this our Walt Disney World Toddler Tip Video. T toddler nice tip. Nice alliteration. Thank you. Toddler Thank tips. You. Toddler tips. Uh, I'm going to preface this by saying that what we're talking about is what worked for us. We are aware that every family is different, every child is different. Um, but this is just based on the experience that we had this uh, last September when we took Josie for the first time. And she was two. And she was two years old. Neither of us had ever been with a child before. So uh, it was kind of like a learning process. And, you, and you're going to find that. Uh, what we talk about on here um, may help you, but you may have to adjust it because you know your child better than we know your child. Or anyone else does. And Josie was different than any other kid. So, exactly. So maybe you'll find some things that'll help you. Maybe you won't. If you don't, that's fine. Uh, but we hope you do so you can enjoy your trip with your little one. Yes, exactly. So uh, with that in <coughs> mind, the first topic we're going to talk about is, stro is a stroller. There are several, yes, there are several different methods that you can use. You can bring your own stroller. Um, Disney rent strollers, they're fairly expensive. And they um, don't look very comfortable. They don't look very comfortable. They're, they're like hard they're, plastic. They're hard plastic. Orlando, Orlando stroller rentals also um, will allow you to rent from them. So they're like a, a third party. The route that we went with was we brought our own stroller. Um, it will save your arms and your back. <laughs> Plain and simple. The, the other reason to bring your own stroller is because if you rent from the park you do not have the stroller from the park entrance to the buses or to whatever transportation or even front in the uh, airport you or know, even to the jetway the even in the airport to the jetway jetway and you know i'm sure leslie's about to talk about what type of stroller we bought but the kind that we bought was a lifesaver and it was lightweight and easy to maneuver with and and space saving actually uh, as far as strollers go. I'll let her get more into that, but um, I recommend bringing your own just because of just based the on our outside experience. of the park abilities, being able to, like, like if, you're, if you're staying on property and you're, you're waiting in the bus line, you can have your, have your child in the stroller so you're not chasing them around as opposed to having to drop the stroller off at the park entrance and, and carry them and or hold their hand down through the crowds. Um, I would rather have the stroller so I don't have to corral my kid while trying to navigate crowds at the same time. Uh, I completely agree. Um, it's also a great place for naps and we'll get into that mm -hmm. um, a little bit later. But like he said, you can ride all the way, uh, if you're flying, you can ride all the way to the jetway at the airport. Um, they will check it for free. Yep. Um, and then you'll get it back on the jetway. As soon as you get off the plane. As soon as you get off the plane. And you can take it, like he said, up to the Disney buses um, from, the, from, the, from the bus to the park, you know, all the way through the park. Um, at the end of the night, you can take it all the way down to the bus stop. Uh, and you can let the child sit in it and, you know, nap or whatever um, until the bus comes. And then you do have to take it, if, and if it's a folding stroller, you do have to fold it up. But... It, it's a... You should get a folding stroller, if, not, if nothing else, for uh, courtesy for the other people on the buses. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, the one that we got, and I may go to Babies R Us and put the link below um, for the exact one that we got, is a Zobo Lightweight Stroller. It's like, it's like a can, it's like a, like like a, cam a canvas, like canvas type, light, light canvas. It was roughly $100. Uh, but we did get it for $50, it. $50 off. Yeah, we, we, got, we, it. we, we got, got it on we sale. We found a deal, but... If you don't have a coupon or any type of sale, it's around $100, or at least it was when we bought it. Yes. There were a couple of things that we bought with it that 
um, you don't have to get it, but it made things a lot easier. And these are all things that will fold up and you can put in the little cargo area underneath the, the seat, the child's seat. Um, first thing was a rain cover. That mm -hmm. thing was a lifesaver in September because it rained s several times when, while we were there. Yeah, not, not for long <coughs> periods of time, but just long enough that you needed it. Yes. And it was actually one day where it rained almost all day. Yeah, that was the, uh, the Hollywood Studios, Hollywood Studios yeah. day. Uh, and as you know, there's not that much cover in Hollywood Studios. So, But, we, but the rain cover literally fit right over the, the stroller, protected everything that was underneath. Um, as well as Josie. As well as Josie. Um, there was actually a, uh, on the side, there's like little mesh. There's a mesh area so they, so she could breathe easy. I was going to say, it also, um, you know, it, it kind of freaked her out a little bit at first. But once she got used to it, she was fine with it. So um, what I would recommend with the rain cover is let your child be in the stroller with the rain cover on a couple of times before you go. Uh, we probably really should idea. have done that yes. so she could be used to it. That's a really um, good idea. But once she got used to it, she was fine with it. She had no problems. Yes. Um, and uh, one thing, uh, another thing I will say about the stroller that we purchased, it had an extendable rain cover. So if there was like a quick shower or something, or if it was like, you know, the sun was like right like on a, top of her. Yeah. Like yeah. A hood thing. yeah it's an extent, it was a, an extendable thing and it, and it pretty much covered the entire stroller. Yeah. Um, so. Just maybe didn't get her feet. It didn't get her feet, but it got everything else. Yeah. So, so, and I also got a mommy clip, which is this big, it, like a, a big clip. Um, and what we used it for was our resort mugs. We didn't, you know, you know, you cannot use your resort mugs in there to, you know, get free soda. But if you have, um, say, water fountains. a water fountain, <clears throat> you can <clears throat> fill it up. If you're not near like a concession stand to where you know they will give you like free ice water, um, you can fill this up right quick if you know the child, you know is dehydrated or thirsty, just a quick sip. Or if we needed like a quick sip of water or anything yep. like that. Um, the other thing that I we bought was a clip-on fan. Um, if you're going in like you know, cooler weather it may not be that big of a deal, but we were in September and a clip-on fan was a lifesaver. Um, it literally clips onto, um, was it the stroller? It clips onto the, to the chassis of the stroller. Um, and where it was really valuable was when it was raining and we had the rain cover on yes. to keep the air moving through the rain cover. Yes. It has the vent, the rain cover has the vents on the side for fresh air but the air, but keeping that air moving was really was really a big deal yes yes excellent the other thing that we did was we made a makeshift diaper bag now we're not gonna have to worry about doing an actual diaper bag this time because Josie is potty trained yeah mommy daddy win for this pot, for this this trip in last September um, instead of taking our huge coach <laughs> diaper bag we I decided to do like a like a little makeshift bag. It was actually a mesh bag. I think I I think what I got it in it was just a black mesh drawstring bag. Yeah, actually, you know what I what I had purchased that came in it was this keyboard from Mac. I mean, it, you know, but I saw it and I was like, oh, that you know, it's it would be lightweight and we can just carry the essentials in it. Um, plus, if you don't make your diaper bag look like that big of a target it won't be a target for thieves. It was a mesh bag and see-through and they could see the only thing that was in it was diapers. Yes. And, um, and wipes. So who's going to want to take that? Yeah. Um, there are other things you can play. If you're, if you're concerned about theft or anything, because it can happen anywhere. Um, we were, it, it didn't happen to us. I mean, but then again, the only thing we did, we put in the bag were things that we would not lament losing. So do not put your, your, don't put your wallet, don't wallet. put cameras, don't put anything like that in this bag. That your we're your about. magic band, I mean, don't it put be anything just that cannot like be diapers lost. and wipes and well, maybe maybe ponchos. Yeah, I, I, I've got a list in here. Actually, I usually keep my uh, my poncho, the ponchos in the uh, in, in my backpack. Yeah. But what we had in there were diapers and and wipes. We got the um, the travel type wipes yeah, that you can wipes. that you can open up and take out. Um, a sippy cup because she was, you know, not 
that good with an open cup yet. Uh, so we had, we would bring a sippy cup every day, a change of clothes, and if you really are concerned about theft, a really neat tip is to, is what I call the dirty diaper trick. Take a diaper. It doesn't have to be dirty. It doesn't have to be dirty. Um, but if you want to make it look dirty, you can put like, you can pour like Coke in it or, to make or it look water, dirty. Or water to make it look, you know. Yeah, wet. well, well. Yeah, um, but you know, if you see something that's kind of dark in there, you're not gonna want it. But wad it up and put it on top of the bag. I guarantee you, no one's gonna mess yeah. with it. Yeah. So, <laughs> you and know, and and never, you know, people. Are like, Why don't they throw it in the trash? Well, because we don't want you to mess with it. Exactly. <laughs> but, but they don't even know that. Yeah, exactly. And we made <clears throat> that bag as lightweight as possible. Um, we only took what we needed for that particular day. Yes, exactly. Um, everything else I kept in the backpack. Um, that we would lament losing like cameras and, and autograph Any, book and else. stuff like that. Anything else, but every, every all the other diaper <clears throat> supply and all that stuff we just left at the room. Like I said, we only took what we would need for that particular day to limit what we had to carry or keep up with. Yes, exactly. Um, this year we're, you know, I, I do want to still take wipes because wipes are a really good thing to have, especially now that they're going to scanning children's, young children's fingers. Yeah. I, I, I'll get into a tangent about that later. Um, maybe a sippy cup, maybe not, because she's got, she's really gotten really good with using a straw, um, and a change of clothes. Yeah. And, and I may wind up just keeping the ponchos down there too, because I mean, yeah. you know. Because the ponchos we use are only 99 cents from Wally World, so. Yeah. No uh, unless we decide to get like a, but I don't know, December's not really known for rain, but a little pop-up shower is always possible at, we should, at, yeah, we, at Disney. We, we'll, we'll, we'll always have. Uh, a, a <coughs> poncho me. for the possibility. Yes, exactly. Okay, so the next topic and something that we found really helped us with our sanity and our overall health, um, going at a slower pace. Now, it's easier to do a slower pace at Disney if you have been there before and you're taking your child for the first time. But I'm telling you, you're not just accept that you're not going to be able to see and do everything. You're and, just, you're and you just know, not. I really didn't feel like we missed out on anything we really, we really wanted we, to do. We really didn't. I think the only thing that... Pirates I'm, of the Caribbean, it was closed. That was closed. Yeah. But, like, we always do a uh, rock and roller coaster. We didn't do it this time because we we centered on what she, you know, what right. she was able to do. And if she napped in the stroller and we had time to do it, great. And we could have done a rider swap, yeah. And we could have done yeah. a rider swap. But, and, and that's another thing I'll get into in a little bit later. Just accept that you're not going to be able to see and do everything. I mean, it's literally, I mean, with four theme parks, the wide, wide, the wide, wide world of sports. The wide world of sports well, complex. The wide, wide world of, sorry. <laughs> two. Slim pickings. Yeah, two. Uh mini mini golf and two water parks there's a lot you're not going to do and see everything now i will say that if you take longer trips you know and what i mean by longer trips are at least eight days it makes it easier it makes it a lot easier to accomplish seeing and doing everything but if you have been to the park before yeah you know what you're going to be missing but the child the toddler the baby what you know whatever doesn't know they're going to be missing this and it's okay. Because it'll be new next time. Exactly. Uh oh. Speaking of, you just want to be you on just camera. Want, you just want to be in here. Hi, Mom. I'm here. I'm here. No, and the everyone say there. hello to Josie. Hi, say hi, Josie. Say hi, Josie. Hey, can you <laughs> blow him kisses? Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. Um, so, definitely take things at a slower pace. You don't have to run. <laughs> run everywhere in the world um, to get to where you... Now, now, if you're comfortable doing that, knock yourself out. I know that, you know, by day four, we were actually taking a slower pace and we were still like... <laughs> just, uh, let, just let me put this out there. <coughs> yeah. To the dads out there, don't be the ding-dong daddy. <laughs> and what I mean by that... Don't be the dad that okay. says, I paid for this trip and I'm going to get the most out of it that I can. We're going to be in that park from dusk till dawn. 
And we will or dawn make, till dusk or whatever. And we're going to do everything because I paid for it and I'm getting my money's worth. You know what? You're going to enjoy yourself a lot more if you relax. Exactly. And, and we're going to get stressed. we're going to get into some of those a, in a little yeah, bit. So, so just yeah. what she said yeah. earlier. Key that out, key be, off of your little one. Well, that comes later, yeah. but yes, exactly. And and kind of just take it easy. Okay, so I'm Nikki. next point. I know you. I know I got Mickey on my shirt. That's right. Okay, so the next point we want to make is about meals. <laughs> now, <laughs> now we decided to do the deluxe dining plan for this last trip. We and and, and people are gonna too. and people are gonna say you're not gonna you're not you're not gonna be in the park enough blah blah blah. I'm telling this from our personal experience. Uh, doing three nuts. doing three oh, do, doing three table service restaurants added to how awesome our trip turned out being. We did a lot of character meals, and we which and, meant we weren't standing in line for characters it, it, while we were in the park. Exactly. Whenever I plan a trip, I plan what works for us is we plan which park we're we do a park hopper, but we plan what park we're going to concentrate on each day, and then we plan our meals accordingly around that. Like so, like if we're going to spend the entire day at Magic Kingdom, we're not going to set a rest, you know, an ADR for lunch over in Epcot or over in Animal Kingdom or, you know. It's called trip continuity, folks. Exactly. Disney has yeah. dining plans. Up the sky! The kids tricks! The master tricks! Are they magic tricks? The music board. You can't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> Disney has several dining plans options. Uh, there is a quick service only um, there is the regular dining plan where you will get, I actually think they have, starting next year, they'll have two snack credits, a table service, and a counter service credit a day. Um, for us, we did the deluxe dining plan, uh, and I thought that was great. You get three meals a day, whether or not it's table service or counter service. Eat, you, eat, eat anywhere you want as long as you got the credits. Yes. And then, um, and two snack credits a day. We... What worked for us was we did several, uh, we decided to do a bunch of character meals and we literally hit every restaurant that had a character meal. But anyway, as I was saying, we did, um, we decided to do the deluxe dining plan, did three sit down meals a day and that allowed us to hit all, all but one restaurant that had um, a character meal and that gave her great character interaction. All of our breakfasts were uh, pre-rope drops, so we didn't miss morning time out of the park. Uh, in fact, it got us in early a couple, yep. you know, for the ones that were inside the parks. And and what I said earlier, we didn't have to wait in line to meet any characters because they all came to us while we were eating. Exactly. So really, they waited on us. We, they, we didn't wait on them. There were a few that, does, that don't appear at the meals, yeah. but still, that cut down on the times that we were waiting in line for characters immensely. Um, like Mickey's Philhar Magic or, or yes. Storytime of Bell. Or, yes, exactly. Or, you know, go have some, uh, go have some brew, some of uh, um, LeFou's brew at, LeFou's uh, brew, yes. at, at, at Gaston's, uh, Gaston's Tavern. Tavern. Yes. That you know, those kinds of stuff. important things that you need to do rather than wait in line for a character meeting. I completely agree. If you do what we do and and get the deluxe signing plan, uh, I will say it is well. If you if you plan if you plan it right and you do the right meals, it is more than worth what you're going to pay in advance for a meal. Um, the other thing about it is when you have a sit down meal, it gives you a chance to get inside into the air conditioning and relax for a little bit. And let your child wind down for a little bit before you go back at it. And our previous point about slower pace, yes. it allows you to do that and not completely kill yourself in the heat. I will say that if you do what we did and do the three sit-down meals and try to hit all the character meals, make your breakfast pre rope drop. I will, I will say that. And get your, and get your advance on your reservations <laughs> early. 180, 180 days, days in advance. Out, get them knocked out. We, we, 
you know, we when that 180 day mark hit, we were we were for this coming on the trip. computer and on the phone getting our ADR set up. And I got every place that I wanted, not necessarily every time that I wanted, but yeah, I got. But, but we got all the all the restaurants we wanted, and you you just had. Leslie has said it before, and it, and it rings true. Just a little bit of planning goes a long way. Exactly. Another point we want to make is Fast Pass Plus. I don't believe in planning every single minute of every single day of every trip, and I have seen people who do that, and I think I'm like, you're going to be so disappointed because, you know, there's no way. It's not all going to happen. It's not all going to happen. But you definitely want to book your initial Fast Pass selections. 60 days out. Right? For the the for the attractions that are crowded that you know that have the longest queue lines and that your child can enjoy if you're going with a toddler for the first time make sure that don't you, book space mountain don't book space mountain you know once you use your three fast passes you can do that later and while they're napping while the child whatever. is napping or you know since they have a, another thing i'm going to talk about is a rider swap in a minute if the child is napping, you can, like he said, like he said, you can add fast passes um, after those initial three that you make 60 days or 60 day, 60 plus days in advance if they're used for the more intense and height restricted rides. And with that, I actually have a list here uh, uh, so that will, so this will help you plan. If you're going with your young one, you need to keep in mind that some of the more intense rides have a height restriction. So, and I'll go by park. Animal Kingdom. Dinosaur is four, you have to be at least 40 inches. Primeval World, 48 inches. Expedition Everest, 44 inches. And Cali River Rapids, 38 inches. You wanna do Epcot? Epcot, you have Mission Space, you have to be 44 inches tall. Uh, Soarin', you have to be 40 inches. And Test Track, you have to be 40 inches tall. Yes. For Magic Kingdom, I did not put this on here, but there is a slight height restriction for Mickey, for Goofy's Barnstormer, you have to be at least 35 inches. Uh, but Big Thunder Mountain, Splash Mountain, and Stitch's Great Escape, 40 inches. For Seven Dwarfs Mine Car, 38 inches. And for Space Mountain, Woo! Uh, 44 inches. And for Hollywood Studios, you have Rock and Roller <coughs> Coaster, you have to be 48 inches tall. Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, 40 inches. And Star Tours, 40 inches. Yes. So keep that in mind when you're planning your Fast Passes um, and then <coughs> what attractions you're going to hit. Like I said, you want to make sure that since this is for your child, if you're going with your toddler or your young child for the first time, you want to make sure you get the, the rides in that they can enjoy and the attractions that they can enjoy. And, and I want to piggyback on that real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. If you go to the park and you're focused on what you want to do, you're actually missing out on quite a bit. And the reason I say that is, we, we, we said before, we, our last trip, we, we had been a couple times before the two of us, and, and it was about us because we didn't have Josie with us. Um, but this last time that we went, we had Josie with us. We made it all about her. And I'm going to tell you what, seeing that kid have fun the way she had fun and the joy on her face i wouldn't give it up for anything you know what i'm a roller coaster fiend but i would not ride she said it before we didn't ride roll, rock and roller coaster you know why because josie couldn't ride it and she didn't nap while we were in hollywood studios and we were having too much fun watching her have fun uh, exactly so don't miss out on your kid having fun because so you, can because go you have to go coaster. ride it yes exactly okay i'm all about the roller coasters and if i have an opportunity to go jump on it i will but I'm not going to miss a second of that kid having fun uh, just so I can have, you know, a, a 20 minute a twenty minute or an hour wait in a line to ride a ride that's going to take about 30 seconds, to, well, about a minute and a half to get to ride it and miss out on, you know, an hour, hour and a half of that kid having fun. I completely agree. So uh, just, just keep that in mind. If you're going with your kid, make it about your kid, not about you. Okay. But... If they do nap in the stroller, we got very lucky. Some kids yeah. do not nap in the stroller. We got very lucky. Josie, when she was ready to nap, she was She'll sleep anyway. out. She'll sleep anyway. Yeah. So <clears throat> if your child naps in the stroller and you do decide to, you know, to do more intense rides, the more intense rides offer something that is called a rider swap. And what that means is it's kind of like a fast pass. If you go to the cast member that is at the 
that is there at the line, they will hand you, hand one of you something that's called a rider swap pass. First person goes in while you stay with your kid. Yes. So Leslie would goes in and stay <coughs> with Josie. When she comes off, I go in on the fast pass line and she stays with Josie while she's waiting on me. Yes, exactly. Uh, so that way, like I said, if the child is napping or, you know, someone want, may not want to ride, you know, you know, I don't like necessarily ride, like riding Tower of Terror. That would give me an opportunity to go into the shop and see all the Jack Skellington stuff while he rides Tower of Terror. Right. If, if you both want to ride rides, that is one way of being able to get the more intense rides in while the child is napping. Or if you want to get them in and, you know, one can take a break, go ride the ride, and then switch off. Right. My next point is familiarize yourself with baby station locations. Each park offers one baby station location, and it's not just a place for, you know, to go and change diapers. For nursing moms. Yes. They have you can, places for you to nurse. They have quiet rooms for you to nurse or pump your breasts. How it, you know, whatever. Uh, or it's just a nice, quiet place for families to go. And it's air conditioned. And it's air conditioned, yes. So, in Animal Kingdom, if you're in Discovery Island, it's by the Discovery Island uh, kiosk and Discovery Island trails before you get to Africa. Um, and if you're in Epcot, it's in Future <coughs> World um, at the Odyssey Center between the Test Track and the World Showcase. Walking to the front of the park. You're facing World Showcase and you're on the back side of, uh, uh, of Spaceship Earth. It's the, uh, the fort to the left. Um, there's a building, it's like uh, back there and you'll see some doors. One of those doors, also there's a, a medical center back there too. Yes, yes. Um, and if for, they can treat minor injuries. It was, let, a, it was a wheelchair. Let, Leslie was run into by someone pushing a wheelchair <coughs> that, that wasn't paying attention. Um, and my ankle swelled. Her ankle swelled up, so she ended up in a wheelchair. Thank you to the that area. Yeah. So, and there you go. Um, that's another helpful tip if you get an injury. Um, familiarize <coughs> yourself with where they have first aid and medical attention. Um, if you're Magic Kingdom, it's on Main Street USA. And if you go all the way down to the end and turn at Casey's Corner to the left, you'll see Crystal Palace. The baby station is to the right of Crystal Palace. As you're facing Crystal Palace. As, as you're facing Crystal Palace, it is on the right hand side right before right before you get to um, go, go to the little area to go to Adventure. Aren't there Land. bathrooms back in there too? Yes, there yeah, are there's bathrooms. A bathroom there. area back there. And then um, also Hollywood Studios uh, on Hollywood Boulevard inside the main entrance to the left. Yep. So right as you walk in to the left. Yeah, so familiarize yourself with those areas. Um, you'll be glad you if did. You get, if you get the uh, the My Disney <laughs> app um, yes. It has maps that will point out these locations to you as well, and that's very helpful. Yes. Okay, My our next topic, we're not going to talk too much on this, but do not force characters on your children. We got very lucky that Josie loved pretty much, except for Buzz Lightyear and Lady Tremaine, loved interacting with the characters. She did wonderful with the characters. But not all kids do. Exactly. Not Every child is the same, and I cannot tell you how it drives me insane to see parents or grandparents take a scream a child a screaming child is obviously scared of this big character with this big head and trying to shove their child you know, that child near the character. Please don't do that. One is traumatic for the child. Yes. And two is traumatic for the cast <coughs> member. Yes. So. And they're they're very well trained yeah. on how to deal with that. But it's still difficult. It is. So if you want to take a picture with the character and the child doesn't want to be near, like put the child on the other side. Let, say say this is Mickey, put the child on the other side so they're not like right up against it. If just don't force the characters on children who are obviously not into it. It'll, they'll come around. Just the, just don't force it, like she said. And the more you try to force it, the longer it'll take for them to come around to wanting to be around the characters. So. Yes, and if you're in a character meal. Um, you know, they'll come to the table. If the child's not really into it, just don't get them out of the booth or whatever. Just let, you know, just let them go, hey, how you doing? And, and the cast member will, will pick up on it. On yes. The signals, so. Yes, they're very good at that. Um, another very important point, we're almost done here. No matter what, 
cue off of the child. Cue off of their behavior. We, like I said, we got really lucky with Josie in every respect. She took naps in the stroller. She, you know, there was only one day that we had to go back um, because, but it was all because we, all of us were exhausted and tired and hot. And really, we wanted to do it too. So and we I mean, wanted to and, do it too. Yeah, we were like, okay, and that, wasn't that Animal Kingdom Day? Yes, it was Animal Kingdom Day. It was day. super hot and it was super crowded, <coughs> and we just weren't feeling the crowd and all that. So, so you know, one of the one of the points I, I must steal Leslie Thunder a little bit is be, be flexible. Don't force your exactly. schedule. Um, like she said, and this has been a common theme throughout the video, is cue off of your child. Cue off of yourselves, too. If you're not feeling it that day, your child's probably not going to have as much fun either. Exactly. So if you need to take, take a step back and take a day of rest, go back to the resort. Enjoy the And pool. that's easier to do if you have, yeah. like we, like I said before, with, the, with other things. If you're staying on property, yeah. and also if you're... Um, Go back to the resort. If you're if you're staying for a yeah. longer stay. Take, take a nap, chill out <coughs> at the pool, and then when you're feeling a little bit more refreshed, maybe you go back to the park later. Yeah. Like he said, be flexible. Do not plan every single minute of every single day. Do your dining plan. Do your Fast Pass Plus. Your Fast Pass Plus. The beauty about Fast Passes is uh, for attractions um, and rides, you have an hour. So you, it, it's not like you have to be there that you know, yeah, single you have minute. a window of time. You have a window of time. You can make a basic plan of attack, but don't plan every single minute because you're going to drive yourself nuts. You're going to drive your kids nuts. Do not be afraid to go back and nap if you are staying on property. Absolutely. Napping is not overrated. No, it's not. Um, you we feel a lot better later if you do. Yes. Uh, like I said, we got lucky with her. Um, she napped in the stroller for the most part. Especially at the parks that have long hours, like they're open for, until not. If you got extra magic hours in particular, like you're nine o'clock in the morning until like 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. That's a long day. Yes. No matter who you are, where you are, whatever. That's a long day. And if so. the kid's not having it, don't yeah. do it. Just just yeah. go back, take a nap, come back, and just cue off of your child. You know your child better than I do, than he does, than anyone else does. Our last point, and this is very important. And I'm big, big, I'm big on this. Do not ever let anyone, myself, him, anyone, tell you that you're planning your trip wrong. You know your, and I cannot stress this enough, you know your family and your child, your toddler, your baby. And what you'll enjoy. And what they will enjoy better than anyone else in the world. Um, and do not tell, let anyone tell you that your child is too young to enjoy Disney World. People can be very judgmental if you're telling them that you're taking a child that's younger, than, younger than three. Or younger than five. Or younger than five. They're not going to remember anything. Don't listen to them. Don't. You, you know Don't. what? You can look at videos on, on our on our page here, and you can see the joy that Josie had. And she was two. And that was last year, right? And she still has to see those videos. She, she remembers. Does. She does. The other thing is, I was three when my parents took me. And I was three or four. I remembered things from 30-some-odd years later. Yep. And I had only been that one time. So... When you take your child to Disney, it's a big deal. Yes. They oh, remember. Oh, I remember something uh, regarding meals. Children younger than three do not have to have their dining plan purchased. Yeah. They can eat off of your plate. And so when if you, you go to a buffet. If you go to the character buffets like we did. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, ding, ding. ding you can get a plate for them and, and they can eat off of your plate and they can eat like a king. And, and you only paid for you and... And you, you only paid for... You, you and whoever you're with. That's besides right. Besides your child. But now when they turn three, they do have to have their own dining plan and, and stuff like Because I guess that. after one year, they start to magically <coughs> eat more. I guess so. Like I said, we, we can give our advice all day long, but ultimately, in the end, you know your child better than we do. So make a plan that caters to you and your family and the and what is going to help you guys enjoy and have the most magical time possible. And we only hope that some of the some of the tips we gave you, um, perhaps gave you pointed you in a direction you needed to go. If not, then you know, 
maybe you know somebody that w it would help. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you would like to comment below and let me know what has worked for you, you in the past, that may help someone else who's getting ready to plan another trip. I invite you to do that. I, I get, we're going to wrap it up. So give us a like and subscribe. We are at, as of this afternoon, 79 subscribers. Wow. It has just, it's exploded, and I, we are so thankful. And There's 79 people that want to listen to us. I know, can you believe that? <sighs> <laughs> so, wow. so thank you so much. We are beyond blessed and, and so thankful. Um, keep spreading the word. As I said on Twitter, there's always room for a thousand. Any volunteers? <laughs> you don't know which our favorite ride is, do you? Well, Not at all. Anyway. Not at all. So anyway, guys, um, so the next video we're going to make is the Star Wars tag. Thank you, Sprinkle Me Disney, for the idea for this for the Star Wars tag. And, oh, and uh, Mermaid and Jedi Adventures also did it, too. Um, and then after that, um, at some point, uh, going to do a What's in My Disney Park bag video. I'm going to have to restock my my brand new bag and uh, show off what I put in my park bag. So for Josie, who's in the next, who's in the next room? That guy, alienously known as Gooch. <laughs> I am Cherry and we are the Disney Beams. Thank you so much for watching. So love, peace, and rock. See ya. And we'll see you real soon. Okay. I